Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. And in this video, we're gonna be reviewing what was inside of this little package. And that is this, an SB2 SD DIY kit, which is the uh, latest offering in a several uh, hard drive emulator options for the Apple II line of computers, more specifically the Apple II GS, but it does support the others as well. Uh, in this video, we're going to be unpackaging, taking a look at the components, building it, testing it, and then giving my thoughts and opinions on it. Let's get started. Before we begin, I want to clarify real quick that this was not a sponsored or promotional thing. This was something I bought with my own money. Uh, this was not sent to me. So um, there's no affiliation with the creators of the uh, source projects or this project itself. No sponsored affiliations here. So let's get to it and check this little device out. Okay, enough fumbling around. Um, I had to go find I had to go find my camera mount. I couldn't do this one handed. I was gonna cut myself, but uh, yeah, let's see what's inside. Ooh, that's a nice, tidy little package. Nice pink anti-static bag. Okay, and there's really not a lot to this little DIY kit. I know on the picture on the eBay listing on the website that it shows the same amount, it doesn't show that much. A lot of these retro kits, um, like add-ons, doohickeys, goodies, and that kind of stuff that are DIY, it's a good size PCB and just dozens and dozens, if not hundreds of little like itty bitty components to solder on and like capacitors and resistors and resistor packs and switches and power headers, pin headers. Uh, so it's kind of nice that this is just a real simple, um, not a lot of component soldering kit, which is good for a beginner because well, I've never soldered a kit like this, so this will be a nice way to cut my teeth on and uh, plunge into the deep end. So let's just take a look at everything before I uh, get to soldering and then we'll get to the testing and the reviewing. So first off, the main PCB. I love the black PCB design. It looks very professional. It's well done. Oh, silk screen looks amazing. I don't know who he had do this. Like I don't know if it's PCB way or what, but that looks amazing. Uh, silk screen on both sides. So, so you know what components go to what side. That's, that's really nice. That way you don't have to worry about um, in the directions flip it over you know make sure it goes here uh, micro sd card slot on this side looks like the resistor and a yep, diode on this side uh, then the arduino nano board uh, goes off this side and the headers and stuff go on this side i oh, want a button right there really nice little kit like you can actually read and that text is actually pretty small so this is the um as you can see, tell from the uh picture and the title and i think i mentioned it before in the intro this is the sb2 sd diy kit this is the diy version of this uh particular device on the website um i'll link down below there's the diy kit there's a pre-assembled kit and then there's the i believe it's called the micro or the mini kit and it's like basically half this size everything's consolidated and it's low profile for like the two c's and the two c pluses really neat play on words here though uh sb for smart port two for the apple II and SD for the, well, SD card portion of it, because this is a, um, a SD card solution, hard drive solution for the Apple II line, uh, specifically the 2GS and the 2Cs, uh, but this is also compatible with the 2E and the 2 Plus line, which I'll come to that when I come to that later, because there are some caveats from the, apparently from the website I read, and got this information from. There's a lot of pins here, but it's not a lot at the same time. Um, like I said, I've seen some bigger projects where it's like hundreds of pins and through holes and surface mounts. Yeah, not a bad looking little kit. Based on an original design by three great geniuses, Robert Justice, Andrea, I'm sorry, I'm gonna butcher your name, Ottaviani, and Catherine Stark, used with their permissions. No commercial use. Um, then we also have um, copyright by Kei Koba of Kiro's Mac Mods of Tokyo. The SP2 SD DIY kit is based on the SmartPort SD project. This PCB design is by Kei Koba of Kiro's Mac Mods, which uh, again, that's the website I'll link to uh, with all these other kits. Uh, we have the little diode we have a resistor which uh what value are you I believe it says yeah r110k so technically speaking you can probably buy just the pcbs uh standalone and you could probably source all this stuff yourself and do it yourself but uh this kit all come came at one anyway so we have a little button we have a micro sd card module 
This is really, that's actually really nice. That you can just buy these things like separately for little projects. That's kind of nice. Micro SD. That's going to be, ah, uh, do I have any small capacity micro SDs? Uh, I don't know. I think I have one or two. I might have to delete the information on them and then uh, do the copy whatever files I need for this. Uh, I'm kind of curious as to that's right angle though. Like something would, like you would mount it and then plug a header into it. So it would almost have to be like mounted like that. Unless it wants you to desolder the header. I don't, we'll have to see when we get to that point. But uh, yeah, micro SD card. Uh, so most of the most of these projects like this in the retro community with these vintage machines um, are using CF cards, USB thumbsticks, and standard SD cards. I like that micro SD cards are used for this project because um, you can still find low capacity SD cards and standard size SD cards, but they're quickly being over overrun by uh, micro SD cards. In fact, my laptop doesn't even have a mic uh, standard SD card slot; it has micro SD, so uh, I can just plug the SD card in and swap files back and forth as I need with my laptop. And if I wanted to use full size SD cards, I would need a uh, USB adapter for that stuff. So it's SD micro SD cards are, are becoming the new de facto standard in most modern tech anyway, so they're getting easier and cheaper to find in various capacities. I think the smallest one I've seen for micro SD is uh, I think four gigabyte. I think it's in my kids' uh, my kids' tablet for storing some movies and stuff. So. I don't know, I'll have to see if I have a small capacity one for that. Ooh, we have some, these are new headers. Yeah, new 20 pin headers. Uh, Apple used these on their, a lot of their cards and stuff, uh, floppies and peripherals and stuff for a long time. And the fact that you can still get these new is kind of neat. That means there's still some company out there that's thing that still uses these. So they're still being made new. Don't have to worry about trying to source these from like tearing apart uh, Apple II products, which is really nice. Let's see, we also have the secondary PCB. Might as well get this out of the way. Uh, this is a 20 pin to 19 pin adapter board. Uh, it's for this project. I don't know if like I could use this for like that uh, little disc two emulator I have to be able to have it plug into the, uh, the two GS and have it work that way without some finagling. I don't know if it'll work that way. It should, cause I think this is just a dumb circuit. Yeah, looks like just a dummy circuit that just connects some pins and bypasses some pins. So it should just work for that purpose, but I'm not gonna try it that way until I hear some more documentation on that. Basically takes the 20 pin uh, that the older disc two cards and stuff used and convert it to 19 pin for the uh, smart port on the GS and the two Cs and the, the later 19 pin uh, drive controllers, but I'll come to that later. We got some pins, which is, I'm assuming for the 19 pin connector, but that is not 19 pins. But then again, that doesn't have 19 holes either. That has, uh, looks like 11, 12 holes. So they must, uh, bypass some not usable pins. And this is really nice. Is that 3D printed? Yeah, cause that's not injection molded. Yeah, I think that's just uh, 3D printed. That is a nice 3D print. Wow. Um, if you check out the website, I'm going to, uh, that this is from. It's an older, older set of pictures and the 3D print is really rough. In fact, it even recommends you taking like a, like a three or four millimeter drill bit and boring out these holes a little further because there's no finer control in those 3D printers. So whatever they use must have been a much nicer 3D printer because that is really nice. Like it all, I would almost be fooled if it wasn't for the the hatch marks you can see, I would almost be fooled that that's injection molded. And this is because these are not produced anymore. Uh, there's no company that uses these anymore, not even in the in any other field. And I say that because I've seen a lot of the older style connectors like MIDI ports and that weird one that uh, the Sound Blaster Honor G2 ZS or the uh, X5 card that like multi-pin, it looks like a MIDI port, but it's got way too many pins. I've seen that used in the automotive field. Uh, so people are still using that connector style, but this, yeah, nobody uses this anymore. So that's actually a really nice connector. I can't wait to try that. And then we have the <laughs> the muscle of this project, the Arduino Nano. Supposed to be pre-programmed for all this. Uh, I hope it's, I hope it is. Looks like it's a uh, USB-C programmable. So if I do need to program it or update the firmware, it's USB-C. That's nice because uh, most of my USB cables on my computer desk are uh, USB-C anymore because, uh, well, everything's using USB-C now. So uh, yeah, not a lot of pins to solder on. Looks like it has both headers. Yeah. So uh, let's get all this stuff to my temporary soldering bench because my main computer bench is covered up with my 5170 at the moment. And uh, we'll get this thing soldered up uh, and <laughs> see how it works. Okay, and yes, here's my temporary soldering setup. Um, yeah, I would be using my wood bench in my computer room, uh, but unfortunately, my like I said, my 5170 is taking up the whole thing from a issue. So um, yeah, I'm not gonna show up any, I'm not gonna show off any up close soldering skills because my soldering skills are abysmal. I know they are. And yes, I say solder without the L because that's the way I was taught. All right, so we're gonna do the smallest components first. Hold that. Bend the leads on the resistor. Luckily, resistors, luckily this type of resistor does not have directionality. 
install the diode. Okay, so the diode here does have a directionality. There's a line right here that I need to put a certain direction and it matches up with the line on the PCB. Make sure I get that right. Bend the leads. I didn't notice the leads for this uh, diode are just a little bit thicker than the resistor, so it kind of had to have some pressure to push in there. Okay, see if I can do this without burning myself. Okay, I'm having a problem with that soldering iron, so I'm gonna change that real quick. Not the best soldering iron I'm using, but got those two on the SD card. And I did read the directions. You're supposed to you're supposed to bend these so that they're straight up, pointed you know this way, and then you solder it in. Okay, kind of sort of something like that. Okay, so go to this side. I have a bent pin that's not going to go in. Go into your home. There we go. I, I do plan on, uh, well, wait for this battery for everyone to heat up. Uh, I do plan on uh, actually building a small soldering station in the computer room with a desoldering pump and all that kind of stuff so I can do this stuff more often. That's all future stuff. Yeah, that'll work. Make sure there's no solder bridges. Nope. And then trim it. Gonna have to sweep up. Yeah. That'll work. Okay, now let's do the that ejection button, maybe. Okay. Buttons on. Now time for the Arduino board. Which I believe should be programmed already. Oh my Okay. actually gonna go uh, look to see what the orientation is for this because uh, I don't want to mess something up. An hour? Oh my god, I've been down here an hour. Alright, so the instructions say the reset button here and the USB should be on top. So, I believe it's like that. Okay. And uh, so I read, the, I read the instructions. I don't know if I caught it on camera, but um, USB port goes up, reset button up, and you ignore these four pins in the corners. I think that's all good. Yeah, I don't see any bridge traces. I do see one pin I missed. So we're gonna take that, get that real quick. Okay. Now for the pin header, which is silk screen on this side, so we know the tab goes up top. the uh, pin header. I'm definitely going to have to scrub this with some alcohol to get all the flux off, but yeah. Alright, time for the second PCB. 
All right, line up the silk screen here. Okay, so I think the directions changed from uh, when this was originally designed and stuff with the old 3D print because it kind of, because it, it said on the instructions to push the pins through this way, but I don't think it's, I don't think these new ones are designed this way. There's actually like a little step on this side where I think they go in through the back. Yeah, I think they go in through the back. If not, I will just start all over. I'm not gonna lie, there's somebody on Facebook when I said I bought one of these things that said uh, he was able to do this in like 10 minutes. I've never soldered a project like this before, so it's taking me a lot longer. In fact, I think I have almost like two hours of footage right now <laughs> because of this, but um, yeah. Oh, I'm not gonna lie, this is actually really tedious for me because I don't, I've never actually done a project like this before. So this is kind of why it's one of those things I'm really hesitant to buy like other DIY projects like this because I've never soldered like this before. My patience is not good for these, um, but at the other hand, this is actually really fun because this is going to be a project that uh, almost anyone can do. And if it does fail, realistically, I'm only really out 30 bucks, um, full plus shipping, but uh, I'll get to that towards the end of the review video. I did screw this up. I did screw this up. So I was trying to real, figure out, you know, oh, maybe the directions changed and maybe you're supposed to put them. No, I did it. I did it wrong. I actually built this wrong. Um, yeah, I built it on the, I built it on the wrong side. <laughs> oh my God. That's awesome. Uh, and also I built it wrong because, um, yeah, that just popped right off. So clearly I don't, <laughs> I don't, oh, okay. So first screw up of the day. That's, or well, not the first, but a mini. Oh, crap. I knew I was gonna do something stupid like that, too. I'll just push all these back out, do it correctly. Ow. Okay, got both of these assembled and cleaned off with some uh, alcohol to get the flux off. So let's get a cable. A SD card, micro SD card, and my Apple II GS, and see if this thing works. Okay, so we have my Apple II GS uh, set up here temporarily on my desk. Um, kind of a long-ish story with that, but uh, anyway, yeah, all hooked up, keyboard, mouse, ready to go, and we have the SB2 SD device. And yeah, I had to go uh, borrow the longer uh, ribbon cable from my uh, uh, Apple II Plus and its uh, SD card emulation device. Because I do have another one that's out of, uh, I think it's one of the Mac, from the Mac Classics. Uh, it's a shorter 20 pin ribbon cable, but it, it's too short for me to plug in and then reach and swap out SD cards and make sure the light turns on, that kind of stuff. And I wanna just, I wanna make sure everything's gonna be good on this. So let's get it plugged in and uh, see if it works and then see how it works. That actually plugged in really smooth. Okay, so we have the uh, device right here, uh, ready to go. It's all plugged in. Uh, so let's just uh, see what happens. No smoke. <laughs> Power light. Quick activity light just flashed. Check start device. Now that's because I don't have an SD card in here. Uh, I just wanted to make sure it was all going to work. And it seems like it's kind of working. Uh, so, I don't know. Is there like, if I do this, is there like some sort of firmware it might? Oh, no. Not, okay. So there's really nothing on it for, for it to register. So I'm gonna go grab an SD card, uh, put some hard drive images in it and uh, go from there. Okay, so I had to dig around a little bit for this, but uh, I have a micro SD card here. I think it's a four gigabyte one. Uh, yeah, that um, I formatted and then I uh, went to what is the Apple II GS.com and I downloaded, uh, they had a preloaded, uh, pre made uh, 32 megabyte uh, hard drive image, which is what uh, this device uses. Uh, you just copy paste and then you uh, change the name to part1.po and it should just uh, move from it. So uh, let's check it out. All right. 
Power on? Good. That's not good. Um, okay, I'm going to try something else. Okay, here's another image. Um, this one is from uh, Reactive Micro. It's the Protoss uh, 8 volume, which works on basically all Apple IIs that have smart port support, so that should work. That's not good at all. Um, okay, uh, <laughs> the, the diagnosing time? Turn that on, move that real quick. I don't know how many attempts this has been now. I am so sick of this crap. Please work. Yes! Oh my god. Freaking finally. Oh, this is, oh my gosh. Don't swear, don't swear, don't swear. Okay, and as you can tell behind me, uh, my Apple II GS here is running a working uh, 32 megabyte hard drive image of GSOS. I am really happy that it's doing this and I'm really relieved because this has been a long time uh, for me trying to get this to this point. Uh, a lot of headache and struggles and frustration and I was really happy to see it. Uh, specifically this is uh, GSOS 6.0.1 uh, which is uh, Apple's final official release of uh, the GSOS operating system. And I say official because um, since this came out in the early 90s uh, there's been some community and fan-made uh, updates to GSOS 6.0 uh, that we're now up to 6.0.4, which uh, is actually really impressive that the two GS is so, so well loved that there's still updates to the operating system. Even though I'm not too surprised because ProDOS, which is for the 8-bit uh, versions of the Apple II, just had a, <laughs> an operating system update last year, as of 2023, um, 2.4.3, I believe. But uh, yeah. Um, more specifically, this is a tweaked and modified version from this website here, what is the 2GS.com, which I believe I mentioned before, uh, that they've added some utilities, software, games, drivers, and such. Basically, it's, it's a consolidated uh, image that you plug into an emulator and you have a basically fully working, ready to go um, GSOS operating system, uh, which we'll take a look at here in a little bit uh, because I want to talk about all the problems that I had to get to this point, which is now, I think, nearly three, almost four weeks of me, of me working on this thing, trying to get it to work. In fact, I actually started to record the 5170's floppy update video uh, as a way to get a break from this irritating the absolute crap out of me because nothing I was doing was making progress on getting it to work. Uh, as you can tell, I shaved and now starting to regrow back, so you can kind of get an idea of the time frame here. I want to talk about, before I get on with the full review, I want to talk about all the issues I had. And I know some people don't like rambling and don't like long, drawn-out things here. So, this first section here is going to be me talking about a lot of the stuff in somewhat detail. I'm going to cut some things out and stuff because, well, a lot of it's not important to the diagnosing of why this thing was working. And then after all that's done, I'm going to do a condensed version of it for people who just want to get the gist of what happened, uh, since some people don't like rambling. So uh, I'm gonna put a timestamp down in the uh, description field, and I'm also going to put a timestamp somewhere here on screen uh, to, of where to skip to. So skip to this time to get to the reader's condensed version. And if you wanna watch the rambling, keep watching. Before I get into this, uh, the issues part of this, I want to mention real quick and say this out loud. I am not blaming or casting fault or any negativity against um, anybody involved with this project. Um, not Kay Koba, who, you know, consolidated all the information to build this project. Uh, not the eBay seller that I bought this device from, uh, because it, I didn't buy it from Kay Koba himself. I bought it from an eBay seller on webs on the on eBay, or the three people involved with the original source projects that got, that was in, that inspired this project, because I right now cannot remember their names. I'll put them over here. After I got done recording uh, a, couple, a couple weeks ago with the SD card, is not wanting to boot or do anything, not detecting any of the images I put on there. I was walking back and forth up the stairs because I took every micro SD card I could find of various capacities, uh, formatting them to what the documentation has said. I downloaded so many 32 megabyte hard drive images from Reactive Micro. Um, what is apple2gs.com? I think I downloaded several from there, uh, and then several I found online, all of them in the correct format, but every one I put on, this SD, on the SD cards, regardless of the SD card, would just do the same thing. It just said no device detected or check boot device 
or not a startup disk. And I was getting really confused as to why this was happening because I was following the documentation. I would put them on, I would copy them to the SD card, to the root of the SD card, and then I would rename them part1.po.2.po, part3.po, etc. as per the documentation. Um, so then I tried doing, uh, they said that the smart port 1.16 uh, firmware update allowed you to put a config.txt uh, file in the root and then you could just copy the images over and then write the images names in order as they were and it would boot that way. It still wasn't working correctly. I actually started having this thought of, well, maybe there's something wrong with the device. So I was going through, I checked uh, every solder joint, make sure they were all there and good. Uh, some of them I reflowed just as a, you know, just in case. I took my multimeter and I was checking every trace, every connection, everything to make sure there was no shorts to ground, making sure there was no bad connections, making sure maybe a trace got, you know, maybe a little messed up when I was soldering. I don't know. I was trying everything at that point. Still wasn't working. So I actually had this really weird thought in my head that, well, maybe it wasn't really pre-programmed. Maybe it was just claimed to be pre-programmed on the eBay listing and you know, because it wasn't bought by Kate Koba, he claimed, he says that they're pre-programmed, but, you know, maybe the eBay seller didn't. And like I said, I'm not, you know, that's not what it was. It was pre-programmed. Um, I'll come to that later. So I plugged it into my computer and I decided to download a couple programs to try and download our program, the Arduino. Now, I have never programmed Ar Arduinos before or done anything with Arduinos, so that's actually also part of my problem here. And I'm not going to recreate the the process of all this and then screw this up because i have it working now i'm not going to do it again to and accidentally uh, undo what i already fixed so sorry for that but anyway i plugged it in downloaded arduino ide which was the recommended way to program this i downloaded the uh, github library and what they said to do and i was it, it wouldn't i arduino ide wouldn't program first it kept giving me a bunch of code errors it said there was problems with the code in the GitHub, which makes no sense because, well, if it's uploaded to GitHub, the code should be good because they, that's what, you know, Kcoba and the eBay seller was using to program the Arduino Nano. But it kept, you know, Ar Arduino IDE kept giving me errors. It kept saying something about this line of code was being redundant to this line of code. Um, this uh, identifier wasn't correct. This name identifier wasn't correct. Give me a bunch of error codes, and no matter what I did, it would never work out and fix. It would never just correct it. It never, it never wouldn't work. Just wouldn't work. Um, so when I tried to finally was tried to write it to the Arduino Nano, thinking, well, maybe it's just it's given errors, but it'll still write it. Maybe that's just the thing with the code. Again, I don't know nothing about Arduino. It wouldn't compile it, and if it did, it said it wrote the program to the Arduino Nano, but in the description error field, it would say it wrote like 284 bytes of data to Arduino, which given how big the line, the code was, I thought that was way too small. And it, it was, it realistically. So anyway, after dealing with that for about a week, off and on trying to program it, program it, I tried another program known as platform.io with Microsoft's Visual Studio. It actually would compile it, but it kept giving more errors saying that the code wasn't right. All the libraries that it was trying to add in weren't correct because it had self, it had uh, indicators for what libraries to include and it still wouldn't compile a program. It wouldn't do anything. So I thought, okay, so this is two Arduino programming suites that are not programmed with Arduino Nano. I actually started to believe that there was something wrong with Arduino Nano. So within that time, I had also emailed Kcoba, the designer, and I kind of, you know, I told him first and foremost in the emails that I'm not, you know, not saying the device is faulty or nothing. I'm just, I need to, some steps to follow that could maybe, maybe I'm overlooking something, something stupidly obvious. And it was basically, he kept, basically it was keep trying to format the card, keep trying Arduino Nano. It could just be something that Nano's, that Arduino IDE is not liking something about it. Just keep trying it. Make sure everything's up to date. The libraries are up to date. Arduino's up to, uh, IDE program's up to date and all this stuff. And it just still wasn't working. So I had actually um, been on Facebook there was a couple people that I had saw on some Apple uh, for, Apple groups that had a similar, if not the same device. So when I asked them, hey, did your device just work? The general consensus was, yeah, it just worked. Of course, they had bought theirs directly from Kcoba's website and had it shipped over here from overseas, I believe Tokyo, and they and theirs just worked out of the box, whether it was the pre-built one or the DIY kit one. So after the email exchange with Kcoba, I actually got uh, contacted by somebody from one of the Apple II groups that bought the exact same 
uh, DIY kit from the exact same eBay seller and he was asking what kind of problems I was having because he was having problems as well. It wouldn't program. We're going to call him Z um, because he, I, I did ask him if he wanted to have his name because he did help me out a little bit with this. Um, but anyway, me and him got to talking and he finally uh, had the idea of, hey, instead of the SD fat library, which is what the documentation says to use, it says to use the most up-to-date one. He said, well, why don't we try rolling it back to, instead of 2.2.3 to 2.2.0. Our Arduino IDE accepted it. It compiled and it wrote it. So I also decided to test it within uh, platform.io because it also has a test function to test and make sure the code is good and it tested and worked fine it worked perfect so i plugged in the uh, arduino nano back into my computer clicked upload and it uploaded perfectly it's it had the right amount of data the right amount of bytes everything said it was working except it still did not boot um this guy tried the exact uh z tried the exact same thing i did and sure enough it didn't want to boot either so but we did make progress by the arduino was actually programmed now, of course, it still wasn't booting, so we were kind of stuck back to step one, but being at step one was better than being step negative five. So after all this um, and getting at least some progress, um, I decided to message the seller on eBay. And I told him, hey, I'm sorry for contacting you. I know you say you don't offer support and I'm not, you know, blaming or faulting anybody or anything. I'm, we're just, you know, tr I'm trying to get something figured out with this Arduino uh, problem here because something's just not quite clicking and I'm not quite sure what's going on. So I told him all the steps that I had done, all the things that I had done, uh, that I had talked to somebody else about another issue, an issue they were having, and just trying to get this sorted. Um, with again, apologizing that I was even contacting him for this because he doesn't offer support because he's just the US seller for this product. And um, he asked me a couple questions about some stuff that I had done and this kind of stuff. And I said, yes, I did this. Yeah, I used Arduino IDE. And then he said, um, well, have you tried plugging it in to Arduino IDE and viewing the serial monitor and seeing what it says. He said it should say smart port V1.16 and if you have a SD card in it, it should read at least the information on the SD card. If not, it should give you an SD card error. So I fired up Arduino IDE again, turned on the serial monitor, plugged it in and I got garbage, like complete and utter garbage, which is what I got before when I was trying to get this figured out. He said, did you set the baud rate to, it's like, 203 something i don't i don't know it's pretty high baud rate so i changed the baud rate and it read perfectly smart port v1.16 so it is working he goes that means the arduino nano is working and it is programmed correctly then he said pop an sd card in and push the reset button on the nano and it should refresh and resend the information on the serial monitor which i did and it kept saying sd card error he said he said tried a few different sd cards and they were all given the same error I said, so is this something weird with like the SD card module or something? And that's what I was kind of starting to think was, well, okay, well maybe it's the Arduino's working, but now the SD card module's not. Maybe it was, you know, something was defective, you know, which is possible. He asked me, he said, well, how did you format the card? I said, well, I formatted um, them all at FAT32 except for the four gigabyte card I was trying. And I said, that would not format as FAT32. I formatted it FAT16, which the documentation say it supports FAT32 based SD cards. He said, Okay, did you try wiping or cleaning the card and resetting the master boot record? Some SD cards have that issue. I said, no, I did not. Which, now that I'm thinking about it, in hindsight, I probably should have done, but I was just assuming that an SD card, you know, clicking format would do that already, which it does not. So I had to go into command line as administrator, go to disk part, on because I was on Windows, uh, list disk, select SD card, you know, clean. Then I reformatted it as a old fat which is just the original fat and then i plugged it into the sd card uh, slot of the arduino nano and it detected and then it was saying image zero error image one error message him that and he said that means the sd card is detecting it is working there's just something wrong with the images you're putting on he said at this point just keep fiddling and tinkering with um, different po images and seeing if you can get it to function it was at this point that i actually messed up something but it ended up working the documentation says to list it as part1.po, part2.po, if you're not using a config.txt file. I copied over an image and I labeled it as part1.po. However, when I checked it, and I like double clicked on it and had it open up in CiderPress, it said it was a part1.po.po, 
which really confused me why it had a doubled up .po moniker. So I removed the .po from the part one in the SD card and it booted right up on this. I actually had this upstairs for about uh, two weeks while I was fiddling with it, swapping the SD card to see if it work and would work and boot, and it wouldn't. So I moved it back down here just to get it out of my way because I was starting to get a little irritated at it. But yes, it finally, finally worked. It was something as simple as I didn't have the right labeling right. And I, now I'm kind of thinking that was my problem the entire time was for three weeks, I kept putting the .po after the part one um, when I was renaming the image, when I could have just left it off the whole time and it might have just, might have just worked. I might not have had any of these, these flipping headaches trying to get this thing to work. Okay, so enough rambling. Uh, essentially, uh, long story short, contacted Kcoba, told me a few things to try, contacted the seller on eBay, got a few things to try, was talking to somebody named Z, got a few things to try. Uh, I downloaded the Smartport v1.16 GitHub um, onto my computer, used the Arduino IDE. I used the older SD FAT library, not the current one, the older one, uh, 2.2.0, uploaded it to the Arduino Nano, wiped a SD card completely using uh, disk part and um, disk manager on Windows to reset the MBR, and then copied over an image in 32 megabyte image and then relabeled it as part one, not part one dot PO. So the, 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 the dot PO was basically my whole bane of my existence for almost three weeks on this. Like I said, I'm not blaming anyone with involved with the projects except for the user who screwed up. So yeah. Let's just uh, take a look to see how fast it loads up. Um, what is the Apple II GS's uh, hard drive image here? Because that'll give me a good baseline of, you know, because it's got some added features to it that takes a little bit longer, longer to boot up. So let's just boot it up and then uh, see how long it takes. And then we'll look at some of the neat stuff they have in here. Okay, so I have a stopwatch right here. I have the 2GS. I'm gonna flip the power switch the second I hit the power button or the start button here. I wanna see how long it's gonna take to load this up. Just kind of curious. That way, if I ever get like a CFA 3000 to test out or a reactive micro turbo drive or a floppy emu. I can kind of benchmark the images. Yeah, and three, two, one. It's actually loading up pretty quick, actually. I'm not gonna edit this part out at all. I'm gonna do this real time, because this is actually pretty neat. So yeah, it says, uh, welcome to the 2GS system, 0 dot, or 6.0.1. Like I said, the, the last official version. Yep, there's the some of the add-on stuff. A shoe, no fluff and tail. I have no idea what those mean. <laughs> yeah, I really don't. I'm assuming it's got something to do with some of the add-in stuff they put on. Did it stall? No, the light's still flashing on the on the Arduino, so it's still reading. All right, second the uh, the icons come up over here. Okay. So the second that changed, I stopped it. A minute 20, that's actually not too terrible. Okay, so what's we got on here? Uh, we have total memory of 1280 and only <laughs> only 188K left. Wow. So I actually have doing some, done some reading on like uh, the 6.0.x uh, line of uh, GSOS. And even though minimum is, yes, the one megabyte add-in card, which makes it 1.2 something meg total RAM, um, there's a lot of people that are recommending like, uh, four megabyte plus four if I, if I want to run any of the stuff, which might be a future thing. It's actually running pretty quick. I think it's because I have, I do have a trans warp in here. I have it set to the fastest speed. Okay. So we have direct connect printer, general, kill the whoosh, whatever that is. Modem port, monitor, printer, RAM, set start slots. Oh, that means I can, uh. Yeah, it means I don't have to uh, keep going to the, con uh, the control panel with the keyboard command. I can just set these. RAM is, uh, yeah, I can make a RAM disk or RAM cache. Yeah, I only have like 163K of RAM left. Oh, that's so, that's pathetic. We have Desk Maker Hermes. What is that? Oh, it's just the... Oh, 
it's just a it's just a text editor. Real simple. Okay, so it has two virtual drives here. I don't have any other drives hooked up because this thing does not support daisy chaining. So what's on the hard drive? Uh, icons, ProDOS. Ooh, we got shareware games. Make that bigger. This thing's actually not running too slow. What kind of shareware games we got? Uh, floor tiles, Dr. Mario. Really? Froggin. Tanks, Hangman, Hammurabi. Oh, I wonder I wonder if that's the game that I made the joke about with the uh, when I was making the Apple II floppies. I said Harambe. I think I mispronounced it. Annoy. Hmm. Lunar Lander, Minesweeper, Moonstriker, Q Bert. That's that's spelled. These are this is cool. So I kinda wonder if these virtual drives here are for any of the games that require it to load from floppy so it puts in like a virtual floppy drive. Cool. That's actually some special stuff here. Well, cool. So I have a working hardware image. So I want to try uh, something else real quick. I'm going to go upstairs to uh, my computer where I have a G two GS uh, emulator. I made a um, hard drive image of five five dot zero dot four, which uses a lot less RAM. So maybe it'll boot a little faster. I'm going to go get that real quick. Okay. So we have a SD card here. I have a second one because uh, I already have the other one formatted and um, <laughs> I've been ex I've, I've been experimenting with that for a little bit and I did find a couple quirks. Oh, I don't have my top, stopwatch up, so we'll, we can't see how fast this loads up, but that's already loading up a lot faster. And this doesn't say GSOS 5. whatever, but this is a 5.0.4. And uh, yeah, like I said, I made this in the uh, 2GS emulator because I was, I was tweaking and playing with some games with the emulator until I got this all fully working. Um, and it's, it's actually booting on real hardware. So this is actually pretty cool. Um, cause I did add, I did go into use Cider press and I did add a few little utilities to this version, uh, which you can kind of see right there. And yes. So I have a couple utilities on here. I actually booted up pretty quick. Uh, yeah, no, I don't have any games on here, but yeah, this is a lot quicker. So I have Kronos 2, which uh, puts the clock on top of the, uh, uh, desktop here. And I have Mr. Apple here, which makes a rainbow pattern on the Apple. It's basically a, a way to see if your computer locked up from trying to run software. So yeah, 5.04 is a lot faster. Yeah, because I also have the uh, Transwarp reporter where I can control my Transwarp from here without having to go into the control panel. Currently it's at uh, seven megahertz and uh, eight K of cache. So I have an older version of the Transwarp. We have keyboard, we have modem port, monitor, mouse, RAM. How much RAM do I have? Uh, memory in use, five, yeah, this <laughs> uses a lot less RAM, 578K and uh, 701K, and that's even with the stuff I added in here. It also has the controller for uh, Zip, Zip GS, which I do not have, but I think I just copied it over by accident anyway. I might remove that uh, later. We need a little device, and one of the quirks that I had with the with this, you may notice there's only one uh, drive on here. I have four images on there. Now, GSOS, this is supposed to let me see the other four images. It's, um, it's one of those weird things where if I uh, wipe the card, reset the MBR, and then copy the four images, and then set them to part one, two, three, four, then I can see all four. But if I do it where I go back in later and then rechange one of the names to change the boot order, it breaks it and the other three aren't seen except for part one. I don't know why. But there's something I want to uh, test on here to see if it works. And technically this button here should let me switch between them, but it, it just doesn't. So this is the ProDOS 8 volume that's on RectMicro.com. This is supposed to be their universal one, but um, in my emulator, this doesn't work correctly. So I want to see if this works on physical hardware. Um, 2GS games. Um, yeah, I'm not. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just so weird that this doesn't work this way. Because I should be able to just go into a boot system, but it, it doesn't work. Like th this is how it should load up, but it doesn't. It locks up. So you can see I have GSOS backup and running. This is the 5.0.4 that I showed um, earlier. Um, but you can see I now have two extra drive volumes here. So this is kind of one of the quirks I was talking about. I went upstairs and I plugged this into my desktop. I used disk part to completely clean the, uh, the, the SD card reformatted it as FAT32, reset the, M the master boot record. And then at once I copied over three images, the GSOS image, 
this adventure uh, simulation hard drive volume imager and then the ProDOS 8 volume that has all those games on it that I tried showing before but it wasn't working and as you can see they're all now working. The quirk is that if I was to plug this into my laptop right now and say I made this ProDOS volume part one as the main boot volume and then relabeled GSOS as part three to change which one it booted first it would boot the ProDOS 8 volume but then if I went back and re-relabeled them as part three and then part one, something breaks and it doesn't see these other two images at all. Unless I re-wipe, reset MBR, and then recopy all the images at once. I don't know what's going on there. Um, I'm not too concerned about that because, yeah, it's a little bit of a weird quirk, but I could easily solve that by just not changing what's on this SD card at all. So uh, yeah, let's just see how these work. Now let's try the ProDOS 8 because this didn't want to work for me for some reason. Okay, now it's working. So now the menu system is working, so now I should be able to do this. Yeah, so this is how it should look when it boots up correctly, but for some reason, if I use it as a boot volume, this doesn't show up right. Um, it doesn't show up right in my emulator either, unless I have it as a secondary boot vo secondary volume that I access through GSOS. I tried this in my emulator, I got it to work every time, so let's see if I can get a game to work. Okay, so yeah, I don't know what's going on with this ProDOS image from Reactive Micro. The, the thing is, I had to, um, the other thing I had to do was to get this to even work correctly, uh, or at least even show up, whether on my emulator or on... Uh, the real hardware here was I had to go into cider press and I had to convert this from a dot two MG to a dot PO. So I think it might have something to do with when I converted it. Yeah. I, I'm still, I'm still tweaking with this. I don't think it's, it's not the image. It's just something weird going on with um, what I'm doing. So let's try the adventure sim uh, volume here. What's on here? Icon simulation, space quest adventure. What's an adventure. Okay. We have the King's quest games bogging down a little bit. Necromancer, Shadowgate, Space Quest 2. I am assuming that's Leaves Suit, Larry. Oh, I'm sorry for the, the camera flashing thing. There's something out of sync. Uh, let's try Leaves Suit, Larry. Because I actually have this on floppy somewhere. So it is working. <laughs> oh, it works. Took a little bit to load in, but that's not too bad. Contains elements of the plot which may not be considered appropriate for some children. So if you're under the age of 18, don't watch this video. How old am I? Five simple questions. Oh God. Where's the... Utah is full of... I kind of forgot when this game was made. James Earl Jones was the voice act. Oh, that actually hurts a little bit considering... We all know he was Darth Vader. The result of Watergate was... Wow, yeah, this is... I'm also trying to think about this because this game came out in the 80s, so if I said I was 32 in the 80s, that means I was born at some point in like the 50s or 60s. That's kind of what the, why these questions were kind of weird. Captain Kanger, oh God. I actually, I actually don't know. <laughs> Slip into your leisure suit and prepare to enter the world of the land of the lounge lizards. Okay, so now this should be total replay. Um, it didn't work before. I had to go back up upstairs and re-download it. Oh, cool. And it detects I'm running a 2GS. Okay, so what the, what uh, total replay does according to the uh, documentation stuff, it scans what computer you have and then what ha options you have installed for like RAM or joystick or whatever, and then it adds and subtracts games from the list. Um, depends on what hardware you have. So I don't have a joystick, but I do have a whole the RAM and a 2GS. So it should uh, only took a few games off. So we have 332 games. Uh, type to find a game. Oh, cool. There's a lot of games on here. Now most of these are for the 2 and uh, 2 Plus and the 2E, but since the 2GS here is backwards compatible with the 2E, basically it'll, it'll run them all too. I don't think there's any 2GS specific uh, games on here. Beachhead. Uh, I actually have this for uh, Commodore 64. Uh, Strike Castle Wolfenstein. Oh, this might run too fast because of my accelerator. Um, I want keyboard control. Oh, well, this is interesting. It's not wanting to control N. Control C. Okay. That's weird. Okay. Control N. Control R. Okay, well, um, it technically loaded, it's just not one to load the game. So this device does have a few caveats with it I want to talk about real quick. Um, one is this is mainly meant for the 2GS, the 2C, and the 2C+, Plus, since those have native built-in smart port support. On the 8-bit side anyway, you load up that 32 meg 
my uh, Prodos 8 game image from Reactive Micro. Obviously, mine's not working uh, on my machine or on my emulator. It's probably user error. Go figure. But on the 2C2C Plus and on this, on the 8-bit side mode anyway, um, load it up and you can play a variety of games on those. On the 16-bit side with the 2GS, you can run almost any version of uh, GSOS. That, that's as long as it's in a 32 megabyte uh, hard drive image, like I said before. In fact, there's even a version on what is 2GS that has all GSOSs on a single 32 megabyte image from System 1 all the way up to System 6 on one image. So you can kind of play around and see the different evolutions of it, like, you know, of the GSOS. This does technically not work on the base uh, 2, 2 Plus, Euro Plus or the 2E, because those don't natively support smart port support, uh, devices. So you would need a secondary device that would give you smart port support in those machines. There's a couple out there. Um, K Koba's website actually sells one called the Grappler Minus, which uses some trickery with the old uh, Grappler Plus uh, clone system for the printer card and some other stuff. Uh, there's one called, I think, Soft SP card, which gives the smart the F2 Plus smart port support as long as you have the compatible disk drive. Uh, controller which is the later 9 pin 19 pin style which i would love to try this out on the 2 plus on the 8 bit side with that prodos 8 image but again that's a future thing um, another caveat is the documentation does say this supports with version 1.16 here that it does support dot uh, hdv which is uh, hard drive volumes dot uh, po and dot 2mg now i personally could not get those others to work apparently you have to do something with that and the config doc text by renaming it .po at the very end in the convict.txt. But like I said, I could not personally get it to work, um, but I have seen others on Facebook and on YouTube get it to work with that with those type of images. So again, it's any pro any problems I've having with this um, and negative aspects are user error. So take, take that with a grain of salt. Like any issues I'm having with this has all been <laughs> me, <laughs> not the device. Oh, with all the caveats being said, I would highly recommend one of these things because for only 30 bucks, you know, even if you already have the other one, the other emulators like the Floppy Emu, CFA 3000, uh, Direct Micro Turbo Drive, you know, whatever, this would actually give you another option to run hard drive based, uh, you know, images on your 2GS or 2C2C Plus. For example, like if you already have the Floppy Emu and you're trying to, you know, maybe setting up your computers for a really cool like vintage fair or retro fair or school event or something, 30 bucks, build it real quick and have, you know, GSOS running on this. Maybe you're reacting micro turbo in your 2E, maybe your floppy emu on your 2 plus, you know, whatever the case may be. For only 30 bucks, it's, and for something that's simple to solder, again, all the issues I had were me, <laughs> but so it, it's still a really great device. It works. And now that I know the caveats and the, you know, little quirks of it, it, I can get it to work for a shot almost every time. I would highly, highly recommend one of these things. If you even if you already have one of the other ones, it's another way to have another way to play around with some GSOS images um, and that kind of stuff. Now that I have a working uh, hard drive emulator and image of GSOS, um, now I can do some future upgrades to this thing. Like there is a RAM upgrade, which is really going to be useful should I decide to run uh, 6.0.4, which I think actually recommends like almost two megabyte of RAM because of all the little goodies that are added onto it. Maybe an Ethernet card and maybe do some online shenanigans like BBSing and Telnets and. Uh, I think uh, uh, Action Retro did some neat stuff with, I think there's actually a website that can, that's dedicated to being able to be accessed by these old machines like this. <laughs> it would be actually really cool to do. Uh, but I'm gonna be buying some SD cards and uh, maybe low capacity ones and then copying over the each the images individually. That way I have a, a variety of images that I don't have to worry about shuffling them around and possibly breaking something. Cause uh, whatever causes it not to see the other three, it's something I'm doing. Because um, as soon as I reset the MBR and then recopy them over at once and then rename them, it, it does see all four. It's just as soon as I shuffle it around, it breaks it. I don't know. So with that being said, uh, thank you all for watching this video. Really hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you liked it, uh, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel to help the channel grow. If you have any uh, comments or thoughts about my Apple II GS here, you know, let, let me know because I'd love to hear about it. Um, I want to hear your thoughts of the SP to SD, or SD to SP device. <clears throat> SP to SD device, if I could speak today. Uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions of it, especially how it compares to like uh, the floppy emu and others in terms of like load times, uh, quirks, uh, pros and cons. You know, because uh, I'd, lo I'd love to test it out against those things as well in the future. I'd like to see like boot times compared from loading in the, that GSOS image. I mean, even though it's not a race with these old machines, it is kind of neat to see what modern hardware can do to these um, old dinosaurs. If there's any games specifically that you want to see me run on the Apple II GS, now they have a way to just run them. Oh, please put it down in the comments because I love trying out new games on systems that I never got a chance to. Be on the lookout for more videos involving the Apple II GS because I do have at least one more video 
involved uh, with the F2GS uh, that I'm currently editing, which I'm really excited for because um, that means that very soon I'll have a fully complete working Apple II GS setup because uh, once that's all done, I'm going to start working on the restoration, uh, cleaning, updates, and all that kind of stuff on it. So, uh, but that's all future stuff. That being said, again, thank you all for watching this video and I'll see you all in the next one. Thanks for watching.